Hi, my name is Olivia Lanes, and I am the North American team lead here at IBM Quantum for Kiskit and Community and Education. So another question that I always get asked when I am talking to students of various education levels and backgrounds is, Olivia, should I go to graduate school? Um, and this is another question that I cannot simply say yes or no to because I don't know all of you as a person. But you can get a good sense of whether graduate school might be for you or not, depending on what you might want to do in your future career. So assuming that everybody who's pondering if they should go to graduate school or not wants to work in quantum information science in the future, that's sort of the, the lens that we're going to be taking here. We can look at a couple different pieces of data and graphs to inform our decision about whether graduate school might be a good idea. And the first graph that I want to show you shows the prevalence of the PhD, the, the doctorate degree, in the United States and also Europe. Uh, there wasn't any information available for um, Asia Pacific, but you can sort of assume that it's not going to be so different than, than these regions. And basically what you can see here is that most people in the field right now in quantum information have a PhD. In the United States, that prevalence is 52%, and in Europe, it jumps up to 67%. This is maybe not so surprising because PhD degrees are generally shorter in Europe than in the United States. Um, but then the prevalence of master's degrees is also higher there as well, and it's 20%, whether then in the United States it is 9%. But you can see that whether we're talking about a master's degree or a PhD, most people working in the field have some level of higher education under their belt. And this is probably because it's really, really hard to learn everything that you need to learn to be useful in quantum information right out of the gate from a bachelor's degree. When I graduated with my physics bachelor's, I certainly thought I knew basically nothing. I never thought that I would be useful in this type of field yet, which is one of the reasons why I went to graduate school. I also thought that I wanted to go to graduate school because I knew in the future I would want to be in charge of my own research, if that makes sense. I knew that I would want to lead a research direction and be able to pick a specific topic to focus on. And I didn't really think that I would have that opportunity if I didn't have a PhD. And I think to some extent, I was correct about that. I think from this other graph that you can see here, you can see that the jump from bachelor's degree to a job in the quantum industry is very, very rare. It happens. There are exceptional students who make that jump. We have plenty of them here on the team as well, but it's not the norm. Um, generally, these people with a bachelor's degree who are interested in working in the field go on to graduate school and get a master's or a PhD, depending on their interests, or they go and they get industry experience in a related field before they make the transition into quantum. Another graph that can help us inform our choices about graduate school is this one right here, which shows the prevalence of the PhD, the master's, and the bachelor's degree per specific job in the quantum industry. So you can see here at the top, it starts out with system assembly or a maintenance technician as a field that you can work in with a bachelor's degree right off the bat. And over 60% of people with that job title only have a bachelor's degree. And these people are extremely useful in the laboratory. They're the ones who keep the systems up and running. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the graph here, we can see that the error correction scientist title uh, is not held by anybody with a bachelor's degree, essentially. It is basically only a title that people with a PhD or a master's degree and overwhelmingly a PhD have. And that's because it's so technically challenging and there's so much information to learn that unless you're really immersed in that field and reading papers about it every single day as one does in graduate school essentially, it's really hard to pick up on that information. And then there's a whole bunch here in the middle, such as a cryogenics engineer, um, a quantum algorithm designer, a theoretical physicist, an experimental physicist that falls somewhere in the middle. But you can see that most of these people have some degree of higher education. So now the next question is, okay, Olivia, I have decided I am going to graduate school or maybe not. What should I pursue in graduate school? And again, I don't know you and I don't know your interests necessarily, but um, we can look to the data again to inform our decisions. So this is another really interesting graph that is sorted by degree level by subject. 
So out of all of the quantum computing companies that were pulled from this study to gather this data, you can see that over 95% of companies in the quantum information sector have somebody on board with a PhD in physics. So it is the most common degree by far. The next most common degree is a bachelor's in engineering, and it's not differentiated by electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, although I would assume these are the two most common choices at over 57%. And then it sort of goes down um, from there to a bachelor's in physics, a PhD in engineering, a master's in physics, and so on. Lots of sort of related fields, as you would expect. At the bottom here, we have a master's in computer science and a PhD in math. I would assume that these are just sort of less common degrees in general. So you also need to keep that in mind um, when you're making your decision. But of course, there are many pros and cons about graduate school. In graduate school, it may shock you to learn you do not make a lot of money. So this is an unfortunate burden that would be fantastic if it could you know, change in the future, if society could mold itself to not have that problem. Um, but in graduate school, as it stands, you will not make a lot of money. So if that's something that's important to you, or if you have a lot of financial responsibilities at this point in your life, you really have to think about it. You know, is this something that I can take financially? You're not gonna be saving a lot of money when you're in graduate school. I did not, for instance, save for retirement, even a little bit when I was in graduate school for six years. So in a lot of ways, when I graduated, I was behind my peers because I had essentially no savings. I was basically breaking even every single month to pay for rent and food and that kind of thing. And um, that's just how it was. But a lot of people, you know, hedge their bets and they think, well, I'm going to make more money with a PhD and I'll be able to account for that missing financial gain that I would have had otherwise while I was in graduate school. And I would say for the most part, you know, that's true, but it's not guaranteed. And if you if you want to guarantee, you know, this is something you have to think about. Um, health insurance, where you want to live, cost of living. There are so many things to keep in mind when you are looking at graduate school. Um, another one is tests. Uh, the physics theory is not a cheap test to take, uh, neither is it a fun exam to take. And I'm not saying you shouldn't take it or you shouldn't go to graduate school because the test was an unpleasant experience, even though it was, but this is something that you want to keep in mind. You have to pay a lot of money to take these tests and to send these test scores out to, to different schools, and it, it is a financial burden. Um, again, where you want to live. When you apply to graduate school, I applied to graduate schools all over the country. Uh, I was in school in Pennsylvania, and I was like, wow, this is my opportunity to live anywhere I want in you know, the country. I'm gonna apply to schools in California, I'm gonna apply to schools um, in the Southwest, all over the place. And I ended up moving two hours away to the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, so I did not travel as far as I thought I would, but I, I was very happy in the end, so that's fine. But if, you are, if your living situation um, is such that it really matters geographically where you are in the world or the country, this is something you also have to keep in mind when you're applying to graduate school. Sure, you can apply to schools that are only local to you or places where you want to be geographically located, but you might not get into those schools. Anyway, there are many things to keep in mind when you are looking to apply to graduate school and trying to decide if it's the right opportunity for you. I do tell people, you know, if you're on the fence, just go through the motions. I actually was on the fence about going to graduate school at, as well at the end. I was looking at master's programs. I was even looking at journalism school for a while. I thought maybe I would become a lawyer, but I also had in the back of my mind that I still wanted to be a physicist. Nice. And in the end, what helped me make that decision is I decided I could always go to those other jobs and those other opportunities later on in my life if I had decided that I was on a path that I no longer was passionate about. But I thought it would be really hard to go from being a lawyer or a journalist to a physicist. It's sort of hard to go in the opposite direction. So I decided to just apply for everything and see what opportunities uh, I, I got. So I took the physics GRE, I took the regular GRE, I applied to a bunch of graduate schools in physics. I got into a handful that I was really happy about, and um, in the end, I knew that it was the right path for me because of how excited I was to pursue my education further. This is not necessarily everybody's experience. This was just my experience. Uh, and I hope that by sharing it, I might have helped at least a handful of you uh, be able to decide if graduate school is right for you as well.